Hi everyone, welcome back. Today is the second lesson of Unit 2, Intro to Functions and Proportional Relationships. And this is all about rate of change and slope. So um, today you'll be able to find the rate of change or slope given a graph or a set of points. So we're going to look at more graphs today and we'll also look at sets of points. So here's my inspiration for the day, which is um, from basketball player Steph Curry. And he says, success is not an accident. Success is actually a choice. So we don't choose, uh, I mean, you don't just become successful from doing nothing. You have to work at it, work hard, believe in yourself, like yesterday's quote, and, um, you know, put the work in. So if you want to succeed in school, you want to succeed in math class, you got to put the work in. If you want to succeed in any other part of your life, maybe your art or sports, um, or any of your other goals um, that you've created, you have to put the work in. You choose to put the work in. So let's start today by talking about rate of change. So rate of change is the ratio. So we're talking about more ratios today. The ratio of the amount of change in the dependent variable to the amount of change in the independent variable. Now these might be new words to you, so I'm going to explain them really quick. So the independent variable we will generally see on the x-axis of a graph. Independent. And we will see the dependent variable. Let's see if I can write upside down. We'll see, I'll write it up here. We'll see the dependent variable on the y-axis. So if I think about my example um, about when I taught swim lessons, and if I made a graph of it, the independent variable was my time, and the dependent variable was the, or the hours, sorry, and the dependent variable was the amount of money that I made. The amount of money that I make is dependent on the number of hours I work. So that's where independent and dependent come in. And we'll see more examples of this, so don't um, freak out if you don't understand it right away. So we're going to look at the rate of change here is a little um, graphic of what rate of change looks like on a graph. So we're going to be looking at the change of y values, so the change of dependent variables to the change of x values or independent variables. And we'll look at graphs like this and we'll look at tables and we'll look at points. So let's start with an example. So this says over time. So let's start with this example. So the graph shows the distance Nathan bicycled over time. What is Nathan's rate of change? So here I have my, oops, I have my dependent variable, I mean my independent variable time, and my distance, which is the dependent variable, because the distance that Nathan um, bikes is dependent on the time that he spends biking. So the first thing I want to do is um, transfer my data over into a table so I can kind of read it a little bit easier. So for my first point, I have one hour. And in one hour, Nathan bikes 15 miles. Pretty good. In two hours, Nathan bikes 30 miles. And in three hours, he bikes 45 miles. And in four hours, he bikes 60 miles. So these are my x, y points, where time is my x independent variable, and distance is my y values dependent variables. So what we're going to look at now is a ratio of the change in distance over the change in time. So let's take it further here. Let me move my face. Oh, right there. <laughs> All right. So I want to find my rate of change from one hour to two hours. And up here I have a little formula that's going to help um, guide me. So my change in distance I want to put at the top. So I'm going to look at my distance from one hour to two hours. My change in distance is going to be 30. Oops. Is going to be 30 minus 15. So I want to find the change between 1 and 2 hours, so the change between 15 and 30. I could do 30 minus 15, because if I did 15 minus 30, I would have a negative number. So 
So 30 minus 15 over 2 minus 1 from 1 to 2 hours. And if I simplify this, I'll get my rate of change. So this equals 30 minus 15, which is 15, and 2 minus 1 is 1, which all simplifies out to 50. 15. So now let's look at 2 to 3 hours. So um, at 3 hours, he went 45 miles. And I want to find the change from that to 2 hours. So minus 30 over 3 minus 2. So this is my change from 2 to 3 hours. And this simplifies again to 15 over 1. So 15. And remember my top value here is distance, which is actually here, I'll put miles here. This is my distance in miles. And this is my time in hours. So it's miles over hours. So this um, unit for this is miles per hour, miles per hour. From three to four hours, we have 60 minus 45 over four minus three. So my change from three to four, I write like this. And this simplifies again to 15 miles per hour. So this gives me my rate of change and I can see that this rate of change is constant. So between every single interval, the rate of change is constant. So the whole time that Nathan's biking, he's going 15 miles per hour. Sound, seems pretty slow, but on a, on a bike, that's pretty fast. So next we're going to talk about slope. So slope, I'm going to skip over here, is the same as a constant rate of change. So before we found the rate of change, which was 15, and we also found that it was constant between every interval. And so that's a constant rate of change. And slope is another way to say constant rate of change. So slope of a line, we're gonna look at lines now, is the ratio of the change in y values. So my y values for our rise, where we rise up on the graph, to the change in x values, which is the run. And the slope tells us how steep a line is on a graph. So we're gonna be looking at slope, rise over run, and change in y over a change in x. So there's four different kinds of slope you can have. You can have a positive slope, which is like going up a set of stairs. So I'm going up the stairs with a positive slope. If I have a negative slope, I'm going down the stairs. So I'm going down, I'm going negative, I'm going into the basement. I can have a zero slope where my line is not steep at all. It's just flat ground. And I could also have an undefined slope. So if I have a line that's straight up and down, that's undefined. If you think about it, I could walk across a zero slope. I could walk up a set of stairs. I could walk down a set of stairs, but I can't really walk sideways up a graph. I can't walk sideways up a line. Only if you had like crazy spider shoes or something. But in this world, we do not go up a line. It is undefined. So the formula for slope, um, if we're given two points, x1 and y1, and another point, x2, y2, then the slope of the line is given by m equals y2 over y1, or the change in y, over x2 minus x1, or the change in x, so rise over run. And this looks like a lot of letters, but we'll see that you can just take points from a graph and plug them into this formula and find the slope. And we use the letter M to, um, to um, denote slope. So slope is M, like yesterday we had constant proportionality, is K. Slope is M. So let's look at how to find the slope M given a line of a graph. So here's my graph, nice line, and it goes through zero, so we know it's a proportional relationship. So my first step for finding the slope of a line given a graph is to choose two points. So I can choose any two points on this graph. I'm going to choose, um, let's do 2, negative 1. And let's do, what about this point right here? So I'm going to do this point, 
and this point, this is negative 4, 2. Negative 4, 2. All right, there's my two points. So this is my x1 and my y1, and this is my x2 and my y2. So my first point, my second point, and it doesn't matter what order I put them in as long as I have two points. So step two, substitute the points into the slope formula. So m equals my y2 is 2. My y1 is negative 1, so minus negative 1 over x2 is negative 4. And my x1 is positive 2. So I plugged it in, and now I just have to simplify. So m equals 2 minus negative 1. These two positives, these two negatives make a positive, so I have 3 over negative 4 minus 2. I add these and keep the negative is negative 6. And I can simplify this a little bit further. If I divide the top by 3, I get 1. And if I divide the bottom by 3, I get negative 2. So my overall slope is negative 1 half. And remember that this is my rise over run. So if I pick my two points, if I go from one point to another, I can rise 1 and I can run negative 2. So be careful because I can use this negative either on the top or the bottom. So I could go and rise negative 1 or go down 1 and then run 2, both the same. So there's my slope, negative 1 half. Now let's um, just find the slope given two points. Sometimes you won't be given a graph and you'll just be given two points, but two points is all you need to make a line. So I'm going to write my slope formula first so I have it next to me. m equals y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So I'm going to rewrite my points so I know which one is which. So my x1 and my y1 are here, and my x2 and my y2 are here. So now let's plug our points in. m equals my y2 is 8 minus y1 is 5, and my x2 is negative 1, and my um, y, I mean my x1 is 2, so minus 2. So careful of those adding and subtracting negative numbers. 8 minus 5 is 3, and negative 1 minus 2 is negative 3. My 3's can reduce to 1, and I'm still left with my negative. So 3 over negative 3 is negative 1. So my slope equals negative 1. And that's what all there is to it. You could also plot these two points on a graph and look at what the rise over run is, and you'll get the same uh, result. So yeah, that slope. See you guys next time.